Hey everyone, welcome back for more Exo Zero's content. Today's video, we're going to discuss the team composition for Wasted Red. But before that, if you want updated Exo Zero's content, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hey guys, so this is basically the first version of the Wasted Red Nation team that I built. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video for my North Von Frosty team comp, I'll put a link up there. Um, I started out with North Von Frosty, eventually migrated to Astoris when... Sorry, I I started with North Von Frosty, went to Greenland, um, did some did some team with uh, Bathory, Rera, and Ulum before. Then when Janai um, was out and Shell, I was able to shift to Astoris and eventually this is where I... I ended up um, I ended up uh, using or leveling up their unleashed potential so I stuck with the stories and when I realized that I cannot you know develop a a very high core stories team I eventually transferred to wasted red um, for that reason I actually wanted to go wasted red number one because of Garf's defensive ability for shared health and uh, Rudley because of again he gives HP and defense and also increases health. So this is actually the the offense offensive version of uh, Wasted Red. I'll show you later a defensive unit as well for Wasted Red. So this actually this lineup has been my solid lineup um, up until I encountered a lot of healing for Talia in which I had to go defensive as well with uh, Ramji and with Iris. So let's discuss each of the heroes that I have with the team and see how they contribute overall. Okay, so this team comp is basically um, for your PvP or PvP tag. So we'll start off with three of my main Wasted Red um, heroes. So we'll start off with Redley. So Redley is actually the best hero in my roster as of the moment so i pulled actually his um his exclusive weapon during the the the, the selector um ticket and just to go over what rudley gives is number one first and foremost for his s1 he is vital because of his silence for five turns for his s2 basically he grants all health Increases by 118% of own maximum health and defense by 137% of own defense. So this is actually where Rudley shines the most. Especially if he... Technically, he's, he doesn't heal your team. He adds or increases the health. So... And he's somehow also a healer. Plus, he is actually a very good damage dealer for his S2 with burst damage. That is why... I, I really like the design of Redley because honestly to be to be to be honest with you, I actually underrated Redley at the beginning. Um I didn't want his FC, but as I got to know the fate core, as I got to know the changes and what what big damage he can bring, especially from the change from of his S2 from from single target to AoE. And also the, the increase in health and defense. I actually was fond of the character already. So basically for Red Lee, he is actually my main main healer, so to say. Or he is actually my main damage dealer as well. So And he is actually a fast character. That is what is good about him. Usually in my first turns with Annie in the team, usually he actually has a lot of mana. And it, uh, usually he goes first or second, depending on the turns with your enemy. So, Redley is actually a must in your Wasted Red team. So, our next would be the general for um, Wasted Red would be Garf. So, Garf is actually as well awesome because of shared health. This is actually very good and also for Command... This is actually very good because he gives um, defense and health by 20%. So, also gives mana. And he is actually, for my team, he is actually 
all the way solid already. And he also has bar will. So in terms of defense, nothing could go wrong with Garf. Um, the only gripe that I have in bringing Garf um, in PvP is that um, he always gets heart struck uh, when Tantalo is on the other side. So what I do is I usually eliminate Tal uh, Tantalo early on before Tantalo could attack um, or, or before Tantalo can take his turn. So just to go over his S1, so this one has Curse. Okay, so damage of 49%. This is pretty much small. But what I usually do is actually um, this one. So this has a big amount of damage on the back row. Um, uh, it just lacks a little bit of a status effect. I hope they could have given her a status effect uh, for this S2 of hers. But overall, Garf is a solid general very solid character very defensive um if not for 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 your matchups with tantala that she is usually um hard struck or given heart strike um she is actually a good of offensive uh, hero as well so again with this two rudley and garf you can't go wrong with them for wasted red so these are your core two and to round out the three top three heroes that should be in your team um, it's actually Annie. I've actually seen um, a lot of teams as well use only Garf and Redley, um, excluding Annie. But Annie is actually one of the best um, epics. Oh, sorry, one of the best uh, legendary heroes, uh, fate core wise in Exo Zeros. Uh, one of one of the what they call this. One of the first who had really. You know, um, the devs created well in terms of her kit. Let's take a look at her kit. So this actually is by far one of the best passives in the game. So Bur Burning Soul grants one ally except the caster with the fastest, at fastest attack speed. So this is usually ready for my team. Damage immunity in 20%. Increase in critical hits for two turns. Gain mana, three mana every round. So this is actually... This is actually a headache if you don't take care of Annie um, early on. So this adds to the mana of Redley and also to the damage of Redley in terms of critical hits. And also he has damage immunity. Take note of that. And that's every turn. So again, Annie is a very good support character uh, hero as well as a very good attack hero. So for, his, for her S1... She also has silence for five turns, similar to Redley. So with with um, your core, you already have um, you already have a lot of um, um, what they call this, a lot of shenanigans in terms of silence. So you have two heroes that have silence, and um, it's actually crucial because sometimes you need to make sure that that hero skips his turn or her turn especially if they are crucial for your win okay so this is what i like about her s1 as for her s2 again this is a a skill or a spell that deals a lot of damage required mana five it's a burst skill three five seven percent damage to all enemies so what more could you ask for so basically annie overall in terms of support overall in terms of damage very reliable um that is actually more on pvp i am looking after um heroes that have skills that have extras not only their damages <coughs> so basically your core for wasted red would be these three redley garf and annie you can't go wrong with them i've used them for a few months already so um more all of them have been unleashed potential there i usually reach grand almost every uh, um, uh, every time for the past i think four weeks already so I've, i've reached grand but i still have to work on my signature force for wasted red although i'm nearing completion as well so i'm just leveling up them they're 94 95 93 okay so again earlier i was able to discuss the offensive version which includes Jinai and in shell so shell is here because of Jinai. 
um, if you don't have Shell in this party or in this um, team, you don't bring... Uh, sorry, if you don't have Janai in this team, you don't bring Shell anyway. Because Shell is dependent on Janai for her passive. So, Shell is dependent on Charm. So, this one, this is a little bit um, hard to trigger. Especially if your enemies have um, a higher attack than Janai. So this is um, what I mean by I actually shifted from the attack type of Wasted Red unit to being a defensive. So because this is actually a good passive, as long as you could increase, you could build Signature Force of Restoris, and you could level up your Jinai as well. So for now, they're on the second team because I'm using the defensive type, which I'll explain later who are the two other heroes part of that defensive unit so for for Jinai she is actually good offense disruption and speed as well so as for shell for the offensive unit um shell actually gives out uh this one the Night Carnival, which is actually great in terms of unit because you need critical hits. But this is also a negative in terms of um, encountering Tantalo uh, on, on, on the opposing side. Because once you, you deal a critical hit towards your enemies, um, Tantalo will give them damage immunity for one turn. So this is actually a negative for her once you encounter Tantalo on the other team. Okay, so more or less, um, again, um, you need you need uh, Junai to effect to have to have a great effect for your enemies, especially for her S one. So for her S one, she actually um, removes barrier once um, the, your your enemies are charmed. So this is actually one of the skills that needs to take effect for your s1 to be more effective in terms of taking out barriers but actually for for what they call this for shell her best skill would be her s2 so this is similar to iris's um additional mana or probably annie for the fastest unit but this one um, resets the turn and gives additional mana for one hero. So basically for Shell, for this offensive unit, she actually manipulates the turn and um, she you can actually select who goes after Shell. Especially if Shell goes first, then usually what I do is I go with Rudley to give S2 to, to give the curtain call or to Annie to give uh, the curtain call as well. So you have two choices if Shell is in your team. Okay, so that is basically it for the offensive type of Wasted Red uh, team comp. For the defensive one, which I have been using for quite a while already because I'm so irritated by Talia. I've been using Ramji. Um, I also, again, I've 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 used um I've used uh, North Vaughn's Frosty in the past, and I have built his kit already. I just need Ramji. Um, to give out um, what they call this to give nullify heal and also I also I also need a first uh, first guardian passive in terms of the shield for the protection of the front row usually when you are on the defensive side your front row would be Garf Iris and and Ramji and they get um, extra extra toughness and defense if Ramji is on your team so this team is basically more on the defensive side and is actually more of a grind it down unit but don't worry you still have enough firepower with Rudley and Annie in the mix so Ramji again is part of the defensive team as number four but for your number five it's going to be Iris so Right now, most of the teams have been doing way with Iris, but you can't go wrong with Iris on your team because she gives a lot of mana, especially to to your team. Because Rudley has a burst spell of burst spell for S2 and also for Annie. So having Iris there is actually a very good ad addition in terms of mana and also in terms of her uh, what they call this her wet fog. So removes all barriers the enemy. 
bars the enemy has when the enemy uses bar once per round. Okay, so that is where actually um, Iris comes into play. Also for 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 Iris, she is very useful in terms of flop flop because again, most of my disruption in terms of turn would be Rudley silence, would be Annie silence, and would be flop flop of Iris. So these are these are um, what these are the things that I do usually in a specific turn in terms of um, in terms of making sure that some of the units skip their turn okay so more or less um when you have a defensive wasted red team it all they actually control the tempo as well so it's control turns control tempo and uh, also blocks the main spells of your enemy um this actually this team is actually well built against greenland um actually i built this team i i consider this team specifically for greenland okay so if you're up against um up against a similar team usually you don't really have a problem it's, it's more on how how leveled up they are if you're against another wizard red team also for um if you if you encounter um what else north one frosty Usually, you come out fine as well because of the tankiness of Wasted Red. The only weakness that you have for Wasted Red would be Linombe because they really, especially for the fast ones, the ones that have been leveled up um, already, um, they actually are very, you know, they deal a lot of damage and they deal it very quickly. So usually after the first round of attacks for Inombe, normally if you survive with four heroes, that's actually very good already. Especially if Rudley is still alive. Usually the one that they pick off for Linombe, if, if Linombe is your opponent, is usually Ramji. Okay? So once that happens, it's okay. You can actually still crush them. But once they once after they attack um, and you're left only with two heroes or three, sometimes it's actually re really, really hard to have a counter attack that can deal a lot of damage to your enemy. So be careful with Lenombe heroes for this type of uh, defensive team because, um, again, they will pick you as fast as possible. So basically, um, if you switch over to the offensive type, usually when you have Janine Shell, the problem with this lineup is actually is usually um greenland so greenland team without the nullify heal is actually a headache for your offensive type of team with janine shell but again right now in the meta you could never go wrong with the defensive uh, type of wizard red so ramji and iris would be a good addition to radley and garf and annie Okay, so for Signature Force, more or less, um, any good team comp is actually, you know, is not, you know, really that effective without Signature Force. So basically for Signature Force, the key, um, the key um, area where you, in you should be able to level up your heroes would be 2-2. Two, two, two. So once uh, once you've reached two two for wasted red, more or less you're actually good to go because the rest would be additional um, buff to Valar. This one, this one is also good, but um, two two is actually good already. Um, you only have anyway. You only have three uh, wasted red uh, wasted red heroes on your team. This one would be a plus. I'm already here at three. So three one and three two. Okay, so I only need two more. So this is buffs to wasted red and defense decrease elemental damage. So I need two more copies of Garth for me to more or less um have a very very solid team for wasted red. Okay, so let's have one match for for wasted red with the defensive lineup. So. As you can see here, I, I don't usually do manual on, on the early stages um, because normally when you when you have a good wasted red team, they are actually 
you know on autopilot already and they can deal um they can deal a lot of damage without creating a lot of mistakes along the way so normally if you again if you have rare on the opposing side normally she goes first next would be would be redly so again if you don't auto it usually red d goes for s1 then garf goes for s1 as well as you can see there ramji actually has shields already for for the team especially for the front row so again the defensive um the defensive uh, plus that ramji brings to the team is actually very big um before i forget some teams actually um bring maggie as well Sometimes they replace uh, Ramji with Maggie. I haven't tried that out. I haven't built my Maggie yet. So again, um, as you can see there, very good uh, team, very solid. Um, although it's it's Challenger 2, but very solid overall performance for Wasted Red. So anyway, guys, this is it for me. So hope you enjoyed uh, my coverage for Wasted Red team and the team compositions that you could probably have with your main core team um anyway in the comments below please write um any questions comments suggestions um inquiries about how to build um wasted red also if you have any suggested units you can suggest them down below okay anyway guys um you all take care stay safe this is the warden and i'm out